know him for his red and white stripy sweater, along with his round glasses and love for bobble hats. Yes indeed, everyone knows Waldo, a mysterious traveller from a series of puzzle books where readers have to search vast creative landscapes of crowds in order to find the mysterious Waldo, along with other items. But just who is this mysterious man? Where did he come from? What was the purpose behind creating this character? And why is it that Waldo has become a pop cultural phenomenon, rarely matched, in which the whole world embraces this strange, enigmatic figure? Well, today we are going to find out. So join with me in the search of Waldo, as we look into 10 things that you may not know about him. Then hopefully we can learn more about why a character in a children's book has become an important part of pop culture. One that has been embraced by all ages. Check it out. Where's Wally? Don't ask me. I can't even find my own car keys. Number 10. Multiple names. Although in the States and Canada this mysterious character is known as Waldo, his original name was in fact Wally. Actually, the franchise is still known as Where's Wally in the UK and Australia. And depending on who you're talking to and from what part of the world they are from, it may get tricky when naming the character as to whether or not to refer him as Wally or Waldo. In fact, I didn't even know the character had an alternative name till I saw a Waldo reference in The Simpsons. Man, he's just not trying anymore. Supposedly, Wally was changed to Waldo in the States and Canada because the name Wally isn't as common there. Also in the UK, the name Wally can also be something of an insult, basically meaning doofus. You Wally. <laughs> and when Wally was originally created in the UK, he was something of an absent-minded fool, whereas in America, the character was changed to being wiser and hip. So maybe that also might have something to do with it? In fact, Wally or Waldo seems to have a different name for every country. In France, he's Charlie. In Denmark, he's Holger. And in the Czech Republic, he's Volik. And in Germany, he's Walter. And in Norway, he's Willy. Number nine, it all started with a love of crowds. British artist Martin Hanford was the creator of Where's Wally, AKA Waldo. The idea originally started because Hanford was fascinated by illustrated pictures of crowds, as he found the idea to be exciting. So in 1986, he was working on an illustrated book which was to feature crowded sceneries. However, Hanford was contacted by the book publisher's art director to come up with a character with a distinct look to be the book's main vocal point, rather than the book just aimlessly focusing on a bunch of random people. So he came up with Wally, a red and white striped jumper wearing Weldon time traveler, who also wore round glasses and a small hat with a pom-pom. Wally was given his look to make him look like a train spotter. Hanford also wanted to make the character seem somewhat idiotic and like he was lost because he didn't know where he was going. It could take Hanford up to eight weeks to draw a double-paged Where's Wally illustration. And finally, the first Where's Wally book was published in 1987. And thus, a Wally was born. Number eight, international phenomenon. Wally, or Waldo, has become one of those pop cultural characters that are so iconic and celebrated that everyone knows who he is. His recognizability is up there with the likes of Superman and Mario, and it seems that the world just can't get enough of him, as there are frequently conventions and world events celebrating Wally. In 2009, the city of Chicago had a real-life recreation of Where's Waldo, where participants could join in and had to find the character. Also in 2009, students and members of a university in New Brunswick in New Jersey broke a world record for most amount of people gathered dressed up as Waldo, only to have the record broken two years later in Marion Square, Dublin, Ireland, where nearly 4,000 participants showed up dressed as Waldo. But then that record got broken once again, this time by Japan, who had 4,626 Waldo lookalikes gathered together in Nagasaki. 
In addition to that, Google Earth captured this image of a giant illustration of Waldo on a rooftop in Vancouver, Canada, which was created by a Canadian artist. Number 7. Where's Waldo's creator also designed an album cover? In 1981, several years before Waldo was created, artist Martin Hanford illustrated the album cover for the Vapors album Magnets. Yes, the Vapors, as in that group that recorded the song Turning Japanese. And you can clearly see the Waldo archetype in this cover, in how it focuses on a crowd of characters, and how there is more to this picture to explore and to discover after first glance. I won't go into it, but there's actually a lot of subtle and not so subtle disturbing things going on in this picture. Just go out and look at it for yourself. In fact, it's been suggested that making this cover inspired Hanford to then focus on a series of books with similar illustrations, aka the Wally books. So, yeah, I guess you could say that in a way, Waldo grew out of 1980s synth pop. Wow, who'd have thought? Number 6. Expanding the Waldo Universe At first, Waldo was merely just a lost traveller who didn't know where he was or where he was going, because he was, quote, idiotic. However, after the first two books, more characters were introduced, such as Waldo's friend, Wilma, who then got replaced by her twin sister, Wenda. I always thought that Wilma and Wenda were Waldo's sisters, on the account that they look and dress just like him, but apparently no, they just really dig his style and copied his look. And then there was Oddlaw, which is Waldo backwards, who looks just like Waldo, only he has black and yellow stripes along with a moustache. To me, I always saw him as an evil version of Waldo, like the Wario of Where's Waldo. However, in the books, he doesn't do anything villainous, as it's the animated series where he is displayed as being a villain. Wally was then given a dog called Woof, and even a wizard was thrown into the mix, in the form of Wizard Whitebeard, who was introduced as sending Waldo on an existential quest to learn more about himself. And, well, he just tagged along since then. And that's how the Waldo universe grew. Or as I like to call it, the Waldoverse. Number 5. Animated Series In 1991, Deke Animation co-produced a Where's Waldo animated TV series, and oh boy did I love this show. It had such a great sense of adventure, and once again furthers the Waldo mythos, giving Waldo and the other characters purpose, rather than Waldo just randomly appearing in a crowded scenario where we learn that Waldo can now travel through time and space thanks to his magical walking stick, where he is often sent on missions by the wizard Whitebeard to solve mysteries, where along the way, Oddlo often tries to create evil schemes to steal Waldo's magic walking stick. To me, the show was just as memorable as the books, and it was nice to see a backstory and purpose behind the Waldo adventures, but sadly, it only lasted for one season. Oh, and it also featured the voice of Brad Garrett as Wizard Whitebeard. Hey, did I tell you that I was notified by a king in distress, huh? And of course, who could forget that theme? Number four, Waldo became a serial mascot. Hello. Waldo may represent many things, but Serial Mascot doesn't seem to be one of them. However, in the early 90s, that's exactly what happened, when Waldo became a mascot for Life Serial, which featured everyone's favourite missing character on the front of the box, along with a Waldo puzzle on the back of the packaging, as well as Waldo trading cards which could be found inside the box of Serial, and at one stage even a Where's Waldo watch, ensuring that not only can kids enjoy a healthy breakfast, but can also start the day off with some Where's Waldo awesomeness too. Number 3. Video Games Believe it or not, but Waldo also crossed over into the video game world in 1991 on the Nintendo Entertainment System in a game simply titled <laughs> Where's Waldo? where Waldo is on a mission to get to the moon and the only way he can do so is when players find him in several pictures. To me, it just seems redundant putting a book challenge into the form of a video game. I think they should have tried something different and made it an adventure side scroller where players get to play as Waldo. Then for the Super Nintendo came the great Waldo Search, 
which is more or less the same, looking for Waldo in pictures, only this time the pictures were more animated, which at least attempted to make it more of an authentic Waldo experience. And then in 2009, another game was released, this time on the Nintendo DS and Wii, called Where's Waldo The Fantastic Journey. Once again, it's a search and find game, only this time the layout and controls are described as being more sophisticated. Basically, to me, it's just pointless having a format put into a video game which belongs as book puzzles. I mean, why go through the effort of designing and programming a game when you can just print it out on paper? Number two, where's the movie? Supposedly in 2005, there was going to be a Where's Waldo live action movie that was going to be made with Nickelodeon. However, the plans fell through and nothing came of it. Jump to 2016 and it seems that plans started to leap forward for the Waldo movie to be a reality when word got out that a live action movie was back on track with MGM at the helm of bringing it all together, with Seth Rogen and even Goldberg starring in it. But three years later, still nothing has happened. So will we ever get that Waldo movie? Or is Waldo better off left in the picture book world? Number one, controversies and bans. There is so much to see in one single Where's Waldo illustration puzzle, it'll be almost impossible to notice every single thing that's happening within the illustration. However, one outraged mother did notice something other than Waldo that caught her eye, and was shocked to see hidden away in one of the vast Where's Wally illustration puzzles, there featured a topless sunbather, which didn't leave much to the imagination. This caused Where's Waldo to be banned from many American libraries, and is still considered one of America's Library Association's Top 100 Challenged Books. The controversy caused adjustments to be made to the illustration, in which for future releases, the sunbather in question was now seen wearing a bikini. But it doesn't end there, as the Waldo book, Where's Waldo, Santa Spectacular, is banned from all Texas jails as it features stickers. Well, that was my look into the mysterious world of Wally, otherwise known as Waldo. So why has Waldo become such a phenomenon? Because we all like puzzles and we all like going on searches and quests and looking for missing things. And of course, with Waldo's look really standing out, it just adds to the notorious nature of the character. And may Waldo continue to have people searching for him for many more years to come. I'm Minty, and Waldo must be the world's champion at hide and seek as people have now been looking for him for 32 years. See ya.